Hi, welcome once again to our YouTube channel. Thanks for subscribing to our channel. We really appreciate you. And today we quickly want to take a rundown on the uh, work practical, the chemistry work practical. Uh, the particular aspect of it that we're looking at is the quantitative analysis, which is the titration. So, uh, WIAC has given us a particular type of titration this year, which happens to be a redox titration, particularly a permanganometric titration. So, that is what we want to look at today. And so, we'll be making use of the potassium permanganate as well as the uh, iron sulfate. Those are the two things that we'll be looking at, or the, the two components that we'll be using for our permanganometric titration. Like I said earlier on, our acid is going to be, for this experiment, our acid is going to be the potassium permanganate, while our base is going to be the iron sulfate. So those are the two things that we'll be looking at. And so we'll quickly go straight into carrying out the titration. And we'll be having some questions uh, uh, tackled just right after we finish this class. Now, looking at the titration, like I said, we'll be needing our potassium permanganate, which is our acid, so it has been prepared to a specific concentration. Work has asked us to prepare it using 1.58 grams per dm cube. And for our base, which is the iron phosphate, the sulfate, we are asked to prepare it using 5.5 grams per dm cube. So we have those substances prepared already. So we'll be actually looking at the uh, titration proper now. So for this particular process, I'll be needing uh, a particular because our acid that we are making use of is an oxidizing agent and we have the base which is acting with reacting with it. So we'll be needing a substance that will actually carry out or we need a substance that will help this titration to actually come to a fruition. And that is why we'll be needing a particular acidic substance, a concentrated acid, which is going to be the H2SO4. We'll be making use of sulfuric acid or tetrazosulfate 6 acid as the name is. We'll be making use of it to acidify our base in this particular experiment. We'll be acidifying our base so as to bring about uh, the uh, reaction that we are hoping to get. So let us go straight into that reaction so we can understand what we are talking about. Alright, I have here, like you can see labeled A, you can see labeled A on this figure. So that is our permanganate, that is our uh, potassium permanganate. So I will use it to fill my burette now. So I have my funnel on my burette, so I will use this to fill my burette right now. Put into the burette right now, so it is filling my burette right now. So I'm going to put it into my burette and which I will zero it. Alright? So I have my acid in my burette. So please try as much as possible, whenever you fill your burette, you remove the funnel from the tip of the burette. So I am zeroing my acid right now, my contact of my burette. And so I have it right about where I want it to be. So that is about the concentration of my acid or the volume of my acid in my burette. And so I will go to the base, which is my iron sulfate. So let me get my pipette. And then I measure, this is my base. This is my base as you can see, B on it, labeled B. So I'll use this to measure my pipette right now. So if we look closely, we will see the content of the pipette. And then I'm trying to make it to be on the many scores of the pipette to actually have a reading of 25 centimeter cube. Since that is the content of the pipette that we are making use of. So, I am emptying this into my conical flask right now. I am emptying this into my conical flask, after which I will add the volume of my acid into the, percent, into the content of the conical flask. So I have the content of my conical flask now, so I will add uh, my H2SO4. I will add it to the content. So I'm measuring 10 ml of the 2 molar H2SO4. So that is what I'm measuring right now. I'm measuring 10 ml. Alright, I have measured 10 ml right now. So I'm emptying it into my conical flask. And so we have the content of the conical flask looking like this. You can see how it looks. So 
my base has been acidified and then I will start running the content of my burette into it. So on the base of my return stand here, yeah, I have a tire, a white tire that is going to help me to identify the uh, end point of the reaction as soon as I get there. So gradually I will start dispensing my acid into it while I scare gently. I'll be dispensing my acid into it. You can see the more, the more we add acid into it, it disappears. So our acid is going into it and it is disappearing. You can see it. You can see our acid is going into it and it is disappearing. So because it hasn't gotten to the end point of the reaction. So we stir gently as we add our acid into the as we roll the content of our acid into the burette. And so we have this. We have the color change. We have the color change now. Our acid has reacted with our base, and so we have a color change. So that brings us to the end point of this particular titration. So let me check uh, to see what our titra value is. Right now, I'm having it to be eighteen point six zero. So quickly, let me create our table. What we're working on is the chemistry practical. 2024 chemistry practical and it is a permanganometric titration. A permanganometric titration. So that is what we have there. So quickly we will create our table now. So this is how our table is going to look. Here, we'll be having rough. Here we'll be having first title. Here we'll be having second title. And here we'll be having the third title. That is what we'll be having. So here we have the final reading. And here we have initial reading. Now you just need to understand your table. We can move it whichever way we want. But let's put it this way so we actually understand what we're talking about. And here we'll be having volume of acid used. So these are the, uh, the content that will be in our table. So we have this now. So for the first one that we did, which happened to be our row, we got 18.60, 18.60 centimeter cube. So that is what we, have, we got for our first type of value. So let's get another bigger. So we actually continue what we have. So we have measured our uh, base, so let us acidify our base now. Let's acidify our base, so like we said earlier on, we add 10 ml of uh, centimeter cube of our H2SO4 is what we are using to acidify our base. So I'm adding it to this now. So we see it. You see? So let's let's continue our titration now. So I am going to add this into our titration uh, bureau now. And so we see what happens again. Okay. You can see we shouldn't since we got the deeper uh, volume earlier on. 
So this is going to be the concentration on the end point of this particular uh, pressure now. So let us see what the volume is. What we are having right now, we are having 36.82. Sorry, 36.80. That is what we are having. So this one here is 0. 0, 0, 0, 0, or 0, 0, 0, and here we are having 36.82. So this place here we are having, that is our initial, so 18, because that was where we stopped, 18.660. So let's take two more readings, and so we will be able to wrap this uh, aspect up. Okay, let me leave this one so we see what happens, because after some time, it's better to see a color change, so I will leave it here for the time being. So we're moving to the next uh, attrition. So we have our base in here now. So we are adding some amount of the uh, H2SO4 to acidify our substance now. So that is what we are doing. So we are adding this to it now. You can see. So adding this to it now, we are acidifying our base. And then we go ahead with our attrition. So we have dispensed the content of our pipette into this unical flask. So let us acidify our base now. So I'm adding 10 ml of our H2SO4 to our content in the conical flask. So I've added it. So I start dispensing. Here we also have 18.10 and here 
we have 20 point, okay we also have 18.20 okay so we can make use of this this and this as our uh, uh as our tetra value we can use this to calculate our average tetra value so that is what we are going to do quickly now so let us quickly calculate our average tetra value so Average central value equals we have eighteen point two zero plus eighteen point one zero plus eighteen point two zero all divided by three. So from here now we should be having our answer should be amounting to let's say we're having about eighteen Points because from everything here now we are having 54.50 54.50 divided by 3 so at the, at the calculation now we are having something about 18.166 cm cube so it's going to be approximately to two decimal places we are having it to be 18.20 cm cube so this is going to be our uh, average tetra value. So we have this to be our uh, average tetra value. So for this reaction, now let me put this aside. For this reaction, for our redox reaction, this is going to be the equation for the reaction. For manganate, for manganate with 5 moles of uh, ion 2 plus reacting with what? With Eight moles of hydrogen to give what we are having here is going to be we have minus two plus and then we are having our I okay plus water we are having four moles of water plus our iron now is going to be five moles of iron but this is around three plus because our iron has been oxidized. Our ion 2 plus has been oxidized to ion 3 plus, and our permanganate has been reduced. You can see the removal of oxygen from this place here to our manganese. And that is why we now have the formation of water here in our product. So, this is going to be the reaction, the uh, redox reaction equation for this particular uh, permanganometric reaction. So, we we'll make use of this knowledge now to answer questions that we come across in our channel. So please, for those of us that are yet to subscribe to our channel, please kindly subscribe to our channel so you get notified of subscribe uploads. Now we'll be answering questions on this in another video that will be coming up shortly, immediately after this video. So thank you very much for sticking around and God bless.